Welcome to episode two of The Context. Today I want to talk to you about Tesla and I want to tell you what is the context for what Tesla is trying to accomplish. Of course, all of us know about the cars and all of us know that they are trying to change uh, the way transportation works, going towards electric transportation away from internal combustion engines, ICEs. But is there more? And especially the way that they are combining the different components of innovation in hardware, the car itself, in software, uh, the self-driving components, for example, autopilot and the future full self-driving option, but also the production process. Does it, this have implications that go uh, beyond what we can hear on the Twitter streams or what the um, numerous deniers of Tesla trying to let us understand? Of course, the naysayers have it easy. Um, Elon Musk himself repeatedly says what they are trying to accomplish is very hard, probably impossible. It is very likely that they will fail. Now, I don't know whether that is what he says to his investors when uh, he's asking for money uh, to invest in the company, in new models, in new production lines. Uh, but uh, obviously he is right. The risk associated with creating a new uh, car, a new car factory, entire new methodologies and new software and everything else uh, is uh, extremely high. Today I am actually uh, talking to you from Chilometro Rosso uh, in uh, Italy. Uh, this is a cool science and technology park uh, near Bergamo itself, near Milan in the north of Italy. Uh, and uh, one of the companies at uh, Kilometro Rosso is Brembo. Brembo uh, is a world leader in uh, braking systems and uh, also a Tesla supplier. We just finished uh, visiting the Brembo factory. Um, actually here is uh, mostly an R&D center rather than uh, a place where they are also producing because the production has to be closer to where the large volumes of the cars are being produced in Germany, in Spain, in China, uh, in uh, the US. So back to Tesla. The car itself is designed so that it can last much longer and the car itself is designed in a manner that together with the software what they are about to launch the Tesla network rather than depreciating constantly right after you bought it it is supposed to be able to keep generating value generating revenue and as a consequence maintain its value much longer in time. So the electric car is itself cheaper to maintain that than a traditional car. There is no oil change, the um, number of mechanical components that can break and need to be replaced is much uh, uh, lower. Um, the, the brakes, importantly, using uh, regenerative braking when uh, possible last much longer and so on and so forth. Tesla actually says that they are aiming uh, to build cars that can last for a million miles with a relatively low maintenance. Already today, the software in the car is such that there are all kinds of functions that are not available in normal cars. Whether it is uh, the uh, autopilot system that today, very importantly, requires the driver to pay attention to what is going on. But in the future, it is expected to be constantly upgraded with uh, uh, features that will allow increased degrees of uh, autonomy to the point where, um, according to Elon Musk, in a couple of years, 
maybe it will take four, doesn't matter, it will become uh, capable of uh, complete autonomy, full self-drive, so that uh, even the steering wheel can be removed uh, from the car. Two um, features that are more um, strange, uh, like uh, the, the dog mode, when you can leave your pet in the car uh, and the display will show that there is a pet in the car uh, and that the car is uh, keeping the interior temperature cool enough for the pet to be comfortable. So that uh, if the car is parked and somebody while you are shopping or doing something comes uh, by, uh, they will not um, freak out, oh my God, the dog will die, but they know that the dog is comfortable in the car. So some of these software components are going to enable soon the launch uh, of the Tesla network that will directly compete with uh, Uber, with Lyft, and with the other car sharing networks. With the important difference that the Tesla network will arrive sooner rather than later with the, to the self-driving point and all the Tesla owners will be strongly incentivized to make their cars available for the Tesla network. Uh, also, this will be an integrated network. Just like Tesla is a vertically integrated company, the Tesla network will be for Tesla cars only. And Tesla will be able to control uh, the features at a very fine-grained uh, ability that is not necessarily available to other um, providers of car sharing platforms. Now, what happens uh, when a car becomes available for the Tesla network? Well, isn't it the case that we like driving, but as soon as we start driving more than an hour, maybe two per day, we start complaining about it. And a car can be shared maybe among different uh, members of the family, but if you are using your car to commute to work, then definitely your car is not available at home uh, while it is away waiting for you to come home at the end of your workday. So many families buy multiple cars, but at the end, our cars today are sitting 90% and more of the time. Imagine what other important investment uh, is so low in its rate of utilization. 90% of the time it's doing nothing. You are using it only 10% of the time. If you uh, leave your home most of the day and you only go back to sleep, even that has a rate of utilization of over 30% if you sleep eight hours out of the 24 every day. So today we are seeing a lot of cars standing uh, on the roadside doing nothing. We see them in parking places and in cities where a lot of the city is designed around cars and car ownership like LA, Los Angeles, in California, in the United States of America, what we are seeing is that a large uh, surface area of the city is dedicated to the cars. Uh, estimates vary, but something like 30% of the city's uh, area uh, is dedicated to, to the cars themselves, rather than to people. Now, with car sharing, the rate of utilization of the car can go up. If you went to work and you know that you are not going to use the car until you finished working, you can make the car available for others to use. If uh, you are at home and you know that you are going to stay home for the weekend and you are not going to go shopping or something else, you can make the car available for the Tesla network. This will increase the, the rate of utilization of the car. And the benefit to you as an owner is to uh, be able and earn additional income 
uh, and to lower the cost of ownership of the car uh, through uh, this. Now, the estimates, uh, of course, are just that. We don't know yet. We haven't been able to see the details. We don't know what the market will bear in terms of a per mile cost for driving a Tesla or having a Tesla drive you once uh, full self-drive is available. But what Elon Musk uh, um, boldly declared is that he believed that there will be about $20,000 additional um, income generated by each Tesla car uh, per year uh, due to the Tesla network operations. There will be also some additional costs for sure, but if the car lasts uh, 10 years, uh, which is perfectly achievable uh, under the current assumptions, then there is $200,000 that is going to be generated by the car participating in the, in the Tesla network. Now the cost of a Tesla is going down. The first model, the Roadster, the second model, the Model S, and then the additional models constantly cost less and less. That is how Tesla was able to bootstrap its operations. First, they were targeting only those fanatic enough to buy an electric car that was very exotic. And only after uh, a while, more or less 10 years, they uh, aimed to produce a, a version that was affordable uh, and they knew they would be able to produce in large numbers. But it is likely that the cost, uh, at least the ability to produce low cost cars is going to continue um, in the future. Models that uh, haven't been even announced yet may cost not 30, 35 or 40 thousand dollars like Model 3, the current uh, lowest cost models for Tesla, but less. 30, 25, 20 thousand dollars, maybe even less. Now, the vast majority of uh, the Tesla cars all are sold uh, under a leasing contract, which means that you put some money down and then you pay a monthly fee. And then after three, four years, uh, there is an other large chunk of money in order to own the car outright. And very interestingly, Tesla already declared that in the United States, this final amount is not going to be available in the option uh, of the leasing agreement. It will not be a lease with option, as it is technically said, but when the leasing contract expires, ends, you will have to return the car to Tesla itself because they will put it in the Tesla network after cleaning it, refurbishing it, checking it. So if you pay, let's say, $10,000 initially and um, three, $400 over the course of the next three years, uh, that is uh, an additional, let's say, $10,000 to make it uh, simple. That's $20,000 that Tesla having you pay in order to get a used car to be put in the Tesla network. But if the car is able to earn $20,000 per year in the Tesla network, then there is no reason to sell you the car at all. As long as Tesla is able to afford in terms of the capital needed to produce the cars and without having you um, subsidize the production of the cars with your initial $20,000 and they can put new cars in the Tesla network. As soon as that point is reached, basically you won't be able to buy a Tesla anymore because all the new Tesla cars are going to go and uh, replenish and extend the Tesla network for car sharing. Now, does that mean that you should go out and buy a Tesla uh, right now because they won't be available in the future anymore? You may want to think about it, even though if 
the Tesla network is available, it means that you won't need to own a Tesla because you will be able to uh, just uh, have one anytime you needed it. But it could be a, an interesting proposition uh, for somebody not only owning one, but if they can afford it, maybe owning more than one and then have a mini network of their own under Tesla's uh, uh, control, of course, but benefiting from the additional income generated by those cars. Now, this is one maybe surprising, maybe unexpected consequence of the context about Tesla. I want these videos to be not much longer than 15 minutes, but there is definitely another part of this that I want to add. And then you tell me if you want to hear more, if you are interested about Tesla, uh, I am fascinated by it and there is more to say, but let me just give another component. What if the product of Tesla, rather than the cars themselves, is actually the Gigafactory? Elon Musk already said that in order to achieve uh, their goals, he believes that there will need to be approximately a dozen Gigafactories uh, in the world. When the first was built, uh, Tesla single-handedly doubled the production of lithium-iron uh, batteries uh, of the planet. These are all the batteries that they need in the current um, and, and near-term uh, Tesla cars. And they knew that unless they took things in their own hands, uh, the current supply wouldn't be enough for what they needed. But what they also did very ambitiously, maybe a little over ambitiously initially, and they had to pull a little bit back, is an automated system for turning raw materials into the product that is the car. And within the Gigafactory, they try to do as much as possible from the working of the sheet metal to the production of the batteries, the assembly, of course, and with as high a speed as possible in order to meet the volumes that the market can bear. The ability to design and deliver at a fast rate a gigafactory is itself part of an industrial process that is improving. Gigafactory 3 in China has opened, uh, it has started its construction in January. Uh, I was at uh, a conference in January in Puerto Rico about artificial general intelligence, safety and security organized by the Future of Life Institute, uh, which is financed by Elon Musk. And uh, he was uh, supposed to be there, but he wasn't because he was at uh, the groundbreaking of uh, the Gigafactory in, in China. And a lot of naysayers said, oh my God, that started, but it will take more than a year to finish, or maybe it will be never finished. But actually, within six months, the construction of uh, the Gigafactory 3 has been completed, and now it is being uh, filled with all the machinery that uh, is required to produce um, cars in China. Actually, Tesla is the first car manufacturer that has been allowed to own 100% of their operations of China, rather than having uh, been forced to set up a joint venture. And the local production, of course, will eliminate any tariffs, uh, any uh, import duties, and it will allow Tesla to supply the largest market of electric cars in the world uh, with uh, the Tesla models that will be available. So back to the Gigafactory, accelerating the rate of innovation in the production its process itself and turning the factory into a product that can be replicated uh, at an increasing pace, at a decreasing cost, is, I believe, a very important part of the Tesla master plan and may become something that we'll hear more about as potentially the same concept will be applied to other 
products. As a matter of fact, and if you are interested, I will record new episodes of the context talking about this. Already Tesla has more than just cars. It has batteries for storing solar energy, um, solar panels uh, to generate solar energy, solar roofs that uh, can be incorporated in newly built homes uh, so that solar generation is part of the home uh, from the outright and producing at scale these other products and maybe future ones will definitely be part of the flexibility and the power of the Gigafactory as a product. So thank you for uh, watching this uh, second episode of uh, The Context. Uh, please let me know if you liked it. Let me know what uh, your questions are, both about this as the previous one about Libra, or what are uh, things that uh, you believe are, are intriguing, but you would like to hear the, the context. You would like to hear them put in context. The next episode of The Context will be out in a week, and we will talk about 21st century life design skills and why they matter and what are the political implications of the emancipation of the individual that is promoted by an increasing ability of feeling empowered by technologies that are available to anybody with the right kind of knowledge rather than disenfranchised and disempowered. So come back for the next episode three of The Context. Thank you.